Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards and today we're taking a look at another Gamma K TK75. This is the fourth one that we've taken a look at. They've got quite a few in the series, but this one is different than the rest. This is an aluminum 75%. So I'm very excited to take a look at it. It's also going to be one of the one that is going to be in my tier list, tier list video for 75% because in the last few months, we've been we've pre been presented with a lot of really nice looking and good sounding 75% keyboards. I've been able to collect a good majority of them. I've done reviews on them. I still am waiting on some reviews I gotta finish uh, and two units that still have to arrive. But once I have them all, I plan to do as best as possible as a comparison head to head to see which ones you know have which features and which ones are better or which ones maybe aren't so good but taking all the factors into consideration now granted i i personally have enjoyed reviewing the gamma k series i actually there's one more that they're sending out to me the sn75 which is a uh, clear polycarbonate one uh, but they wanted me to, to to take a look at this one so with this tk75 pro over the other ones we've been taking a look at uh, obviously, we have hot swap, we have the RGB multi-platform compatibility, but we have a knob, we have three-mode connectivity, and an aluminum alloy, as I already said. I, mean, I know, for one, I'm interested to take a look at what's inside, so let's go ahead and take a peek. So before we take a look at the keyboard, I do like to see what's in the box, and here we do have a handy um, user guide card. It could be folded up, and it just has all the different combinations um, how the function keys work depending if you're on windows mode or mac mode and how to change light settings as well as how to switch between layers under the accessories flap have a usb a to usb c standard rubberized cable with a, and we also have a standard wire switch and keycap holder and here we are with the gamma k tk75 pro um, in this lovely color, I, I forget, I want to say it's witch something, but I forget what this one is, you know, trying to pay homage to, let's say. It has a pretty decent aluminum. It has a very silky soft feel to it. And though it has some weight to it, it doesn't feel like a brick. Like it's... It feels solid, but at the same time, it doesn't feel like it's over heavy. So this might be, I know some people like to take aluminum on the, on the road. And this, I think, would be one of those that would work well. Um, we do have a nice knob here. It's a, is it a D knob? Oh, it's quite well attached. I got to say that knob is quite well attached. We'll have to take a look at it at some other point to see if it comes off but let's go ahead and check to see what we have under these keycaps here oh we have a switch that actually matches the colorway i like that it has a purple bottom and a i'd say almost like a light lilac top with a pinkish stem it's a linear switch with I'd say probably a 45 gram spring, maybe a little bit more. And it does have a glassy bottom out, though it is a bit deeper. It's not harsh and it's not too sharp. On the PCB, we can see that we have the Hi-Fi layers, the PET above the PCB with the IXPE above the PET. Below, I can feel, feels it could be a pour on foam below taking a look at these stabilizers here these are plate mounted and yeah they are a little bit loose a little bit more than i'd like but let's go ahead and pop these off real quick it does not appear like we have the ability for screw and stabilizers so that's probably going to be one thing when i come back to it after the tier video is to tighten these up a bit we do have a 3 and 5 pin south facing PCB. A 
it doesn't sound half bad. I was talking about in a, another video, as of late, a lot of these keyboards with the plate-mounted stabilizers, they've gotten almost as good as screwing. I know screwing, I mean, you know, it's not clips, but some of these, even when there is a little bit of looseness, because I remember not too long ago, if, especially on steel tray-mounted plates, if we had a stabilizer that was even a little bit loose, it was almost a guarantee that that stabilizer was going to take but nowadays i mean i don't know what what magic they're doing but i am coming across a lot less i'm coming across less issues with plate mounted stabilizers whereas it almost was a rule rather than an exception back in the day that you had to tune plate mounted stabilizers or you had to install you know screw in stabilizers if the ability was there but these I've got no complaints. This keyboard. It's probably on the deeper end. It's, if not the deepest, it's right there. Like, <clears throat> right below the deepest of the 75% that I'm taking a look at stock. This is. Still has that marble. It has a creaminess but it has a deeper tone to it. And I got to say, I really enjoy that. So uh, on the back, we do see, a, um, this reminds me of another keyboard, but I can't think of which one right now. We do have pocket for a 2.4 gigahertz dongle, which is very nice. I would have appreciated Gamma K emblazing their logo on there, but I can go ahead and do that myself with a Sharpie so that if I ever lose it, I know what it goes to. Then we have a Bluetooth and a 2.4 um, setting. So it, e even having to do the function at five, even if it's in the middle, because it could just be charging. Um, then we have the connector, the USB-C connector. And then we have these feet that are reminiscent, again, of something else. And it's killing me that I can't remember. Um, anyway, I, I'm kind of a sucker for these ball feet because they're usually pretty good and they don't slide and obviously we're dealing with aluminum so we wouldn't have flip out feet although i do have two aluminum keyboards that have flip out feet but they're they're made much better but flip out feet on some keyboards you can press them a certain way and they'll actually fold in and it's like ugh. but these actually not only won't they won't fold in on a if for some reason you're working you don't have a desk mat they're actually going to help soften the keyboard and you know any thudding i've heard some you know especially those older oak desks that are super thick and you put the keyboard straight onto the the desktop without anything in between and you start typing it literally almost echoes throughout the entire um wooden cabinet uh, or wooden desk and cabinets and it just becomes like this speaker like duh, 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 duh. i guess that would be the way to get the ultimate thought though I digress. Anyway, um, it's it is it's funny because one of the things that I look for because I've been taking a look at a lot of Ajaz keyboards lately. Um, I was like, I've seen this one before, and I see that. So there's obviously some sharing of manufacturers for at least the keycaps here, uh, but that M is exactly like the M on the Ajaz um, keycaps I've been seeing as of late. So. At least the keycaps I know are coming from. So these should be 1.5 millimeters in thickness, if my hunch is correct. Yep, 1.5 millimeters. So it's a decent um, width for the body of the keycap. Um, these switches. Let's see. Oh. Oh, okay, they're KTT. I missed the badge before. I wonder which KTTs they are. Let's take a quick look. A few moments later. So it turns out this is the KTT Hyacinth Linear. Now, it's funny because I've been wanting to take a look at this switch, and lo and behold, now I have. Um, I'll have to probably do a separate review, but in this combination, sounds crispy i love the rounded corners 
Um, the knob is, is a nice, I mean, it's the same finish as the rest of the keyboard. Has that very classy, but for me, desired wedge design. Um, like I said, I love the round feet on here. And, and like I said, it's substantial. I mean, don't get me wrong. You could still use this to defend your cubicle. It's about three quarters of the weight of other 75% keyboards. And it doesn't seem to affect the sound at all. And obviously there's no flex. I mean, it's an aluminum keyboard. Um, so I, uh, I kind of like it. I, like I said, and I, I, I like the fat bezels. I know some people will say, well, why didn't they add another key right there while well, they're trying to create some space? Um, I know the rainy and a lot of other models have kind of set that aside and it does kind of help if we're, you know, gaming and you want to find those arrows you can find them from over here from this block or you can find them from over here so i kind of understand and, and because i have the delete key here i don't really have a problem with it so for me it's a layout that works um, it's one that i could actually just get to work with the way that it's set up um no i'll have to figure out where the insert key is let's go ahead and plug it up and see what it looks like i like that the default color actually matches the color way so let's do function five. So we're in wired mode. All right, we're connected and we're looking good. Check out what the RGB looks like. All right, the RGB is actually quite bright and uh, we do have the SMD window. So, I mean, it does still come through and despite having, uh -oh, what kind of plate do we have on there? So that is a polycarbonate plate, but I thought for a second, maybe it was palm because it is, um, it's opaque and it's not, you know, kind of clear, whereas the usual PC um, plates will allow, you know, more diffusion, like the little pockets that go in there. But I really do like these. As far as linears go, a lot do feel the same except for the weight. But this one, it just sounds and feels nice and it kind of matches with the whole theme of the of the design. Now, I did notice that this actually comes gasket mounted, but it comes with screws inside. And I'll come back and we'll take a look at it after I've done my 75% tier list video. But it apparently allows you, it's right now it's in gasket mode, but you can change it to top mount if you want. It is gasket mount right now, but it allows you to switch over to top mount. And that is pretty cool. Just the specs. Today, we were taking a look at the Gamma K TK75 Pro. It is a three mode aluminum 75% mechanical keyboard with a knob. It comes with a gasket mounted PC plate, which can also be top mounted. It has a three and five pin south facing PCB with hi fi layers and no holes for screw and stabilizers. It comes preloaded with KTT, Hyacinth, linear switches, and double shot PBT Cherry keycaps with a thickness of 1.5 millimeters. The chin of this keyboard sits at 22 millimeters above the typing surface, while the back sits at 39 millimeters, providing for a default typing angle of 11 degrees. This keyboard comes weighing in at 1,493 grams and has a battery capacity of 4,000 milliamp hours. This keyboard MSRPs for $99.99 from Gamma K's website. Links below. So for the software, we can download it from the Gamma K website. Uh, they have, um, for the last several keyboards I've used, it uses the same driver. So for me, it already came up because it was already installed and I had recently updated it. But at first we come to our main screen where we have the primary or top layer uh, where we can rebind keys. We can also set the key sensitivity. And we can also have it detect the OS automatically between Mac and or Windows. We can, we also have the option to set um, 2.4 gigahertz light off and sleep at certain times as well as for Bluetooth. Then of course we have the function layer and the red keys are ones that have already, they're basically system keys. You cannot um, remap them, but um, I'm gonna go ahead and set my delete function as insert and why don't we go ahead and set end underneath home now one thing i did want to check about that knob 
is because right now it was set to play. It doesn't seem to allow me to change the it says forbidden, though I can save it, but it, I can only save it as what it's set at. But for the press, okay, right now it says play. If I select mute, I can confirm. Okay, so I'm able to change the button to go from mute or play or do something else. I'm not sure why I can't do anything um, just with the knob itself. And of course, we have our light section. We can go ahead and select different light effects, the speed, the brightness, the colors, and so on. And we can also switch over and do per key RGB. Now, this program from Gamma K also allows you to get online and not only share your particular setup that you might have for the RGBs and light settings, even macros for certain games. Um, you can also download ones that other people have set up now on the light edit you can also just select a static picture and use that static picture to set the per key rgb it's going to kind of pixelate it um really with only big pictures is going to make sense i did one here and it really um just kind of looks like a mishmash of colors then in the settings page we see our app version, we can update firmware, it will let us know if there's anything available. Uh, we can minimize and exit, and we can actually set the background that we want for the particular, for the software itself. We can actually set the background for the configuration software itself, or just reset it back to normal. Being that I've reviewed a number of Gamma K models over the last few weeks, I do like the fact that it uses a single uh, piece of software. There's only two other companies that I've seen, or three other companies I've seen that do that. Um, everybody else seems to do a separate piece of software for every different model, even though it's pretty much the same software. It's just, so I think that there should be modules and it should be only one software package, but I do still hold out hopes for a open source um, firmware framework that will allow manufacturers to easily adopt it and for people to easily be able to extend it so that like for keyboards and screens you can easily add information that is important to you and i do think that as more people enter that enter the hobby there's going to be more push for open source projects right now i've seen a lot of individuals but i'd like to see i mean Obviously, QMK and ZMK have groups, um, but it usually starts out with one individual. But as the hobby continues to grow, I think we're going to continue to see that. And I mean, once somebody cracks and makes a way, a universal way, I mean, it may not be in, not that I, I mean, I don't think it can't be done. I don't think it will be 100% um, as every MCU is different, but it would be something to see a universal firmware that everyone can use and can be applied retroactively but it would be nice to see a universal firmware that could be backported to older keyboards um some other you know keyboards that i've got a few keyboards that there's not even a place to download um maybe on the internet archive but it's not the easiest to find the software for it so it'd be nice to be able to you know adapt a firmware to a, a piece of hardware that you might like but that's neither here nor there um i'm quite enjoying this uh tk75 from gamma k i think it's really nice so we have a decent 75 percent aluminum keyboard uh decent enough software that's going to get us where we need to be for most tasks um and a great price i mean 99 bucks and it's probably going to be on sale here and there. Personally, I really like this. Um, I did off-screen test the connectivity 2.4. It was immediate. Uh, Bluetooth 3 and Bluetooth 5 also pretty fast. And I did not notice any stuttering whatsoever. So I'm going to guess that they're probably using the plate as the place for the radio signals to, uh, to get through. Um, we have a decent keycap set. We have a decent switch 
um, the KTT Hyacinth. I know a lot of people have asked me about it, and I just hadn't gotten around to ordering a pack, and now I've got it here, so I may do a separate uh, review of that switch alone. Would have liked if they would have included a few extra keycaps, maybe a novelty or two, and a few extra switches just in case. No one knows what's going to happen. Having spare switches is always a nice thing. But all in all, we are getting a lot of keyboard for a very minimal price tag. Um, this is in stock. It's available on a white base and a black base. Um, and it's I don't think there's going to be too many people that disapprove. Now, it does have a little bit wider of a bezel, which is kind of my like. Some people might prefer a thinner bezel. But for, for me, this keyboard, it, 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 it works. It sounds nice stock. It feels good. It has two different mounting options. It has decent enough software to where I've been able to program the keys that I need to use where I, ha where I need to have them. And... Um, and the connectivity over wireless is is good. It's nice and solid. So I do hope that you guys enjoyed my review. I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys now with a stock sound test of the Gamma K TK75 Pro. A thumbs up, a subscribe. It really does go a long way. And if I've earned it, I'd appreciate it. Anyway, for right now, I want to wish all you amazing people a wonderful week. And until the next transmission, keep calm and Keyboard on.